Good evening and welcome back to the Bro Bryce 64 channel. My name is Bryce L. Tomlinson from NewDepthMedia.com and today I'm going to resolve for all of you a uh, an age-old mystery and that is how to use Vice, uh, the emulator Vice, on the Mac to access V1541, which is a virtual 1541 from CommodoreServer.com. Basically it allows you to mount virtual disk drives and you can use Comet Chat and uh, you can have virtual disk drives that are basically cloud mounted in CommodoreServer.com's website and this allows you to have uh, up to 10 disk drives mounted at once and uh, it, it just has, it opens up a multitude of things having your Vice emulator connected to CommodoreServer.com. So uh, without further ado, I'm also going to show you how to do this on both the GTK or X11 version of this and the Coco version. So you guys will get a, uh, a really good idea of how to do it regardless of which emulator you're using. And um, you may find that this has some common uh, aspects to the Linux version too because it's basically going to be Linux uh, syntax that I'm going to use for this. If you hear some snorting going on in the background, that's my pug sitting here next to me. So please uh, pay them no mind and let's commence. So uh, first off, let's launch the X11 or uh, GTK version here. This is version 2.3. I am running it on OS X Mavericks, which does not come with X11. So when you go to install the GTK version, you'll have to install X11 quartz. Uh, from the App Store, but the cool thing is that when you for the first time you try to run it It tells you that X11 doesn't come with this version of OS X and you can get it from the App Store And there's a link right there, so it couldn't be easier You go right to it and download Quartz install it and WinVice will just or uh, Vice will just work. I Say WinVice because I just got this working on Windows and that was pretty easy because on the Windows version All you have to do is type in the IP address and the syntax is a little different, and the location of the menu items is a little different on uh, the Vice for the Mac. Now, mind you, uh, I will pay tribute to those people who have contributed on CommodoreServer.com uh, into the comments to sort of clue me in on some of what it is. But the information was incomplete, and the Mac version of Vice, uh, some of those RS-232 settings are just kind of undocumented. So it's just not as clear on uh, the Mac version as it is on Windows. So let's just uh, get right into it. This is a GTK version of Vice, uh, which I have not yet figured out how to configure to run in full screen. But you, from here, it's going to give you the X message here, and you click on X64, which you can, by the way, just run X64 straight across. But uh, I have it running from the menu, so I can run the Vic version and all that stuff. Okay, so from here, you go straight into settings. And from here, you go into RS-232 settings. Now, unlike the uh, unlike the PC version, all of the settings that you're going to tweak for the GTK version of Vice are going to be in this submenu, RS-232 settings under settings. So from here, you go right down here, make sure that user port RS-232 emulation is checked. That is checked. From here, you make sure that the baud rate for that user port RS-232 is set to 2400. Then you set the user port RS-232 device to exec process. You are not going to use serial 1 or serial 2. Use exec process. And... Uh, the reason why is because you have no method from the Mac of typing in a direct IP address into that serial port, so it's just useless to do it. So we're going to execute a command line. So to do that, you have to use exec process, and then you go into settings, again, RS-232 settings, and down here below that is program name to exec. Okay, we're going to execute a program. And I will just read this straight across to you. This is exactly what you have to type in. You need to type it in exactly as I have it written here. 
because if you stray from this, it'll just hang and you'll get a load error. So you have the pipe symbol here, which is the character. If you guys don't know what the pipe symbol is, that is right above the enter key or the return key, the backslash key. You hold the shift key and hit the backslash key there and you get that pipe symbol. Okay, so you have one pipe symbol, NC, which stands for Netcat, which is a, a, an application that is basically going to put your serial port uh, information through to an IP address. And then you have, you pass the uh, minus P or dash P parameter, space 30007, which is a port, not sure what it's for, but that's what you have to put in. Space, and then the current IP address of Commodore server is 50.112.163.22. I'm not sure if that changes ever. Um, I'm sure he's got a static IP on there. But uh, for now, we're just going to say that that's the IP address. If it ever does end up changing, then you would, of course, want to change the IP address to reflect that. Space. 1541. Now, mind you, on the documentation on CommodoreServer.com, they put a colon here, okay? But you don't put a colon here because Netcat uses a space to separate the port parameter from the IP address. So, again, it is, let's go over it quickly, pipe NC space dash P space 30007 space 50 dot one one two dot one six three dot two two space fifteen forty one okay click OK now your setup should be pretty much complete to finalize that you want to save the settings right away and exit vice and uh, mind you there's uh, functions up here to quit vice and you can do that but you see that the vice is still running. So um, I'm just going to quit from here and quit exports here. And then we'll rerun it again from the launch pad. So I'm running vice again. It's going to come up and ask me again. X64 is what I'm going to click on. Now my settings should be in place, right? So now I need to load the image. So I'm going to attach the disk image from the menu here. And uh, I've got that disk in my downloads folder. V1541.d64. If you don't have that, you can find the link in the description or you can get it uh, directly from, if you're watching this on CommodoreServer.com, you can find it in the public disks. Okay, and um, so now you've got that attached on there. Now you type in load or L shift O, whatever you like to do, quote, star, asterisk quote comma eight comma one and it's gonna load it and you don't run this you type in sys 49152 it's gonna run it then you type new to wipe it out by the way uh, according to Goog the new version of the v1541 software will type in new for you when it's done so we're going to type in new, and now we should be ready to go. I'm going to type in L shift O, that's short for load, quote, exclamation point, quote, comma two, which is the device for the Commodore server. And from here, you see that it's working because it's showing logged in as Commodore server public. And from here, you can do all that. You can also type in right from here, load comment chat comma two and then it will start loading and cool thing is from here uh, you can go into warp mode and <laughs> I know that's sort of crazy because it's actually downloading the program and you can speed it up because it's only running 2400 baud and then you run it and it's going to download the uh, ML code and you're logged in so then all you have to do is type in your username and all of that stuff so for now, I'm just going to go ahead and quit Vice and X11 here. And we're going to load the other version of it, which is the Coco version. Okay. And um, there's several 
different types of uh, applications under the Coco version. I'm going to type in, I'm going to run the X64, which uh, I love the Coco version of this because I get the full screen effect and, uh, you know, I can play my Dino Eggs in all its former glory. All right, so from here, you go straight to the settings menu. And it's just a little bit different here, okay, because you don't have RS-232 settings on the uh, settings menu, but you do have what's called the resource inspector. It's all the same stuff, all the trimmings, all the bells and whistles, just in a totally different interface. And why this isn't documented, why this isn't more uh, more documented and and whatnot is beyond me. Um, but this is where your all your settings go. So where we're going to be is we're going to be inside the peripherals. So you need to go into cartridges on here and you need to make sure that under peripherals, under cartridges, that the user port RS-232, you expand that out and you need to make sure that the baud rate, which you would double click on that. Oh, wait a minute. You don't double click. You scroll over you hit that up down arrow and go to 2400 make sure it's enabled and then make sure it's set up on device one okay you can set it for any device but you just gotta configure that down below okay so we're gonna go over here and go to the RS-232 settings down here and under device one you can see that it defaults to slash dev slash tty50 or S, S0, which is serial port 0. All right, and we're going to make that say pipe NC, just like before, dash P space 30007 space 50.112.1632. Space 1541. Now, again, this is a command line parameter. You should be able to just type in the IP address from here because all things being equal, this is basically the same uh, menu configuration as you have on Windows. But because it's Linux based, I guess uh, this is the format that you're going to have to do it in. You're going to have to use Netcat and uh, Basically, you type this in. So once you have that typed in, make sure that your baud rate is set to 2400 down here as well. And make sure that all your settings are finalized. What I like to do is I exit out of this, then I go back into the resource inspector and double check and make sure everything stayed there. So once it stayed there, exit that, save the settings, all right, save your settings, please save your settings. And from here, we can just quit X64 and the Coco version actually will exit, which I love. Okay, uh, just seems like a cleaner application. All right, so launch pad again, we're gonna launch it again. Just make sure this thing works, right? Now we've got it reset, we go up to file, attach the disk image, unit number eight, just like before. Gonna go into the downloads folder, B1541. Okay, so now it's loaded. So let's load star comma eight comma one. Still learning my way around the emulated 64 keyboard. Once that's loaded up, once again, we're gonna type in SYS49152. Type in new to clear it out and then load to make sure it's running, we're gonna load the exclamation point comma two. And sure enough, it's logged in as Commodore Server Public. So once again, if you wanna go into Comet Chat, you can chat with me sometimes there. Load Comet Chat comma two. And that's gonna start downloading it at 2400 baud. Again, you can go up here to options, click on warp mode, zoop, 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 zoop gets through fast and disable the warp mode and type run 
loads up the ML code, and boom, you are in. Then all you have to do is type in your username and password, and you can log right into Comet Chat and chat with uh, Goog and Agent Friday and Bro Bryce and um, all those fine folks over there. All right. Anyway, I want to give a big thanks and shout out to everybody who commented on CommodoreServer.com and uh, on the Milwaukee Commodore Buzz uh, page on Facebook, the group page, uh, which is where I'm posting some of this stuff. Uh, it's our local Commodore user group. And uh, we meet on the second Saturday of each month at Mocha Express on Webster and Thiessen currently. So make sure that you check the uh, Milwaukee Commodore Buzz group page there and you'll find out more about our user group. Uh, currently, it's just, uh, you know, laid back, a few people getting together, chilling out and playing with their Commodores. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's been super helpful. Uh, hopefully it will save you tons of time because I ended up beating my head against a brick wall for a long time trying to figure this out and really get it hammered out. Uh, make sure that you pass all the parameters just the same way that I type them in here. You shouldn't have any problems. All right. Thanks very much and you have a great night.